Only fight physically when all other options have been depleted. Hello everyone, I'm Tim. Funakoshi's third precept can be taken both literally and figuratively. Karate stands on the side of justice. Now like the second one, this precept cautions a practitioner for avoidable physical violence. But this one goes further than this and literally spells it out. Don't go punching people without a justifiable cause or you'll end up defending yourself in court. That's the type of self-defense they do not teach in any dojo. As I said last week, familiarize yourself with the local laws regarding physical violence, especially if you're an experienced karate practitioner. When well-trained, your hands and feet are like swords. I'll elaborate on this when I'll talk about Funakoshi's 15th precept. So we're at three right now, so uh, stay tuned. Anyway, this precept implies that Karateka must stand on the side of justice at all times. And just like in the second precept, only fight physically when all other options have been depleted. Like I said before, with great power comes great responsibility. This is not only true for Spider-Man, it's great advice for anyone who has the power to do harm. See, the greater the power, the greater the caution. As we can see so often in our history, it's those that hold a position of power that cause the greatest harm. It should be up to them to practice restraint, especially if they are martial artists. If this series is to your liking, then a sub to the channel would be powerful. So you should only use karate as a way to defend yourself. That is a given. I feel like I've been telling you this for weeks now. Funakoshi's third precept does tell us more than just this though. You see, it encourages us to question our daily decisions. It tells us to evaluate whether what we do is honest honorable and just. We often get the responsibility to decide on issues of some importance. It is our duty to decide in the most just fashion possible. Karate stands on the side of justice is therefore a lot deeper than it may appear at a first glance. So think of it, how often do you have to decide to either do or do not do something of any importance? Do you always choose the most honorable option or do you more often take the easy way out? Sometimes the right thing to do isn't even clear enough while you make the decision. If that happens, do you go back and try to make amends? Or do you pretend it's impossible? I know, it's not easy. After all, I'm only human, a flash and blood, I'm me. I'll stop singing now, I apologize. Besides, the Human League did it so much better than I ever could. Go and listen to that song after this video. Last year, we had the honor to witness karate's debut on the Olympics. Now, I'm not going too far in the whole discussion about sports karate again. I already did that. But I can repeat the words of Baron Pierre de Coubertin regarding fair play when he organized the first edition of the modern Olympic Games in 1896. I'll translate it too, so don't panic. See, he said, L'important dans la vie, ce n'est point le triomphe, mais le combat. L'essentiel, ce n'est pas d'avoir vaincu, mais de s'être bien battu. Or, the important thing in life is not the triumph, but the fight. The main thing is not to have won, but to have fought well. Note that he used the term fight, highlighting the link between sports and combat. If you like what you see and you want to see more, Click right here to see more. For now, let me wish you a wonderful day, and as always, thanks for watching. When police officers approach Chuck Norris, they say, we have the right to remain silent.